Shall we start? Okay, so well, I'll. Uh, I think today we will. Uh, yes, today we will finish the well, this part on quantum harmonic chain, and then we will consider the quantum missing model. Okay, and this is a recap, but there is also something new about what we did yesterday. At least I changed a bit the notations. Uh, because okay, yesterday with all the indices, uh, in the end it was a bit uh, messy, so I, maybe it's better to use uh, a vector notation, which is easier, okay. more complex. Okay, so we consider this a system of uh, harmonic oscillators. This system uh, can model the, the movement of ions in some crystal, and uh, in particular, we just for the sake of simplicity, we imposed periodic boundary conditions which means that the, the variable n plus 1 is equivalent to the variable at 1. So. And OK, this is the Hamiltonian of the, of the model. Uh, Pi is the conjugate momentum of xi. So the, they satisfy this commutation relation. H bar is equal to 1. Okay? Uh, yeah. Then OK, let's introduce this kind of vector notations. We have n momenta and n uh, coordinate position variables. Okay. So we can collect them in uh, some vector. And I define this vector p hat vector. Okay. And this is the same for the x. Okay. Now using this notation, it is well, kind of simple to show that the Hamilton is written this way. So you have a scalar product within these two vectors. In the scalar product, we have to multiply each element by, you know, by itself squared. So it becomes p squared, and so on. And then instead, the other part is just given by the vector of x, scalar product with the cx, where c is the matrix that I introduced yesterday. Why you find this matrix? Because if you expand the square here, you have x squared minus twice xi, xi plus 1 plus xi plus 1 squared, but then you have to consider that uh, you, uh, you have to consider all the contribution from uh, both from i and i minus 1, and so you find the, do you want to see it, or, or you are happy with the Hamilton, and we can go on? You want to see how this matrix arises, or you, it's okay? I think it's okay, so we can go on. So this is our, or maybe there is a, I hope there is no wrong factor here. Let's check it, okay? Just to be, just to be sure, because now I'm not sure anymore about the factor. Yeah? So if you write the, this term of the Hamilton, okay, you have a sum over i of xi minus xi plus 1 squared. Hmm? This equals sum over i of xi squared plus xi plus 1 squared minus twice xi xi plus 1. Okay? So you have this. This term is just the x vector x. The second term is the same because we are just shifting the, the index. Mm -hmm. So we find twice x vector x minus sum over x of this. Sum over over i, sorry. Twice xi xi plus 1. Mm -hmm. So our matrix, so if we if you write this as x scalar some matrix applied to x, 1, xn. What we find, we find that the diagonal should be equal to 1, uh, 2, 2, because we have the scalar product. And then here there is a minus twice xi, xi plus 1, but it, which can be written as minus xi. We can rewrite this term as minus sum over i of xi, xi plus 1 plus 
xi xi minus 1. And so we have the 2. Minus 1, minus 1. So apparently this was correct. I guess it's a uh, correct uh, Okay. So this is the if I can, I can erase this, no? Hmm? It was just a check uh, because I wasn't sure. So this is the Hamiltonian, which is in this compact notation, it's a bit better. And then, okay, we, we try to find the excitation energies and the spectrum of the Hamiltonian, and we, the idea was to use the same uh, uh, formalism that we use in, for the case of a single uh, harmonic oscillator, so this ladder formalism. Okay? So the idea is to introduce some operators, which are linear combination of the coordinates of the problem, x and p. And then we impose that the commutator between the Hamiltonian and this, this operator, which can depend on some, this is just an index, because in principle we can find more of these operators. For the single harmonic oscillator, we have just one operator, but in this case, because we have a chain, we can expect that there are many of them. Yeah. So we, uh, the idea is to, is to impose that the commutator between the Hamiltonian and this operator C is proportional to the operator itself. Why do we do this? Because if you are able to find this operator and using both this relation and this other relation, which, which is essentially the conjugate of this one, so they are related, okay? then you find immediately that the ground state should be such that the, uh, it is annihilated by all this operator, AK. Why? Because when you apply these operators to a an excited state, you find that the energy becomes lower. Okay? And it's lower by epsilon k, which is by definition here positive. Yeah? So this means that the ground state is determined by this condition. Uh, it uh, annihilates all the all these operators. But okay, we, we don't know only uh, what is the, the ground state, we also can construct the key. Yes? Okay, bigger than this, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. There will be a letter for blackboard. So. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is the ground state. Uh, what about the excited state? Because well, when you apply this letter operator A to, uh, to, uh, to, um, to an excited state, to to an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, what you find is that uh, you find another eigenstate of the Hamiltonian with energy which is the same as before plus epsilon k. Yeah. So in other words, we can construct all these excited state by applying this, uh, this ladder operator to the ground state. So this is the idea, the general idea, but then okay, we, uh, we started doing the calculation yesterday and uh, get some problems with the indices, okay? But okay, and now we can complete this, this calculation, I guess. Okay, so we we have to impose the commutator between these and these. Are, are you fine with the notations? These are just vectors. These are numbers. Okay, uh, maybe if you prefer, I can change this uh, 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 the the symbols here because I use X and P like uh, the coordinates, and maybe it's a bit confusing. If you prefer, I change them. Uh, I do, not because I, I didn't do that because I started with this notation, but are you fine if I change them? Okay, so let's call this U, and let's call this, uh, no, Q, no, uh, how do we call it? Uh, we call, let's call this Y. And let's call this Q. Okay. Uh, 
เออหืมผมทำนี่สุดเทกเออเราที่นี่สุดว่าเราใช้สิ่งนี้ชื่อว่าดูสิแต่นี่สิ่งนี้เป็นคอมบินเอชันและนี่สองประเทศก็ต่างกันดังนั้นชื่อ B และ X ซึ่งไอเดียคือการสร้างความหมายที่ที่ผมคิดว่าเราควรจะมีความหมายที่เท่ากันอย่างเช่นระยะเวลาและเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาเราดูไฟล์เราดูไฟล์ที่ following equation epsilon and times oh now I have to change all the q and vector x plus y and scalar product with p this is equal to Minus i p no p is uh, q now q n vector p divided by m plus one over four i m omega squared c okay now let's go plus One over four i m omega squared c x now c uh, y n scalar product x It's how oh, can you derive this? Actually, you know, it's kind of simple. You just have to take the derivative, if you want, in a, uh, uh, with respect to the, the variable p and x. You can do it with the uh, indices if you want, but this is essentially the uh, just a, a quick trick to, to obtain the result. So we we have this equation, and we have to solve it. Okay, this is just imposing. I am posing this hmm? using uh, those notations. So how can we, uh, first of all, what does it mean? Here you see that there's a linear combination x and p, both here and here. Hmm? So the only way to, to satisfy this equation is that all the coefficients for x and p separately, separately are, uh, are equal on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, are equal to each other. So this imply this question that epsilon n q n should be equal to 1 over 4 i m omega squared c y n this is one question then we have the other question for the momentum yeah epsilon n uh, y n is equal minus i q n over m These are probably the questions that I that I wrote in the, yesterday in the end. Okay, so well, then okay, what do you want? We mm, okay now I don't have a normalization. Okay, maybe we should do this. Okay, so I can uh, I think I can erase it. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I need to see. Okay, so we have this question to to solve, but actually we we also would like to impose a normalization for this operator. Because you see, these equations are invariant uh, under, well, you can multiply 
this equation by a, a, a constant and we obtain the same. Okay. So we want to uh, fix the normalization. And the way to fix the normalization is to impose that a dot a k a dot k is equal to 1, which is the same relation that we had for the harmonic oscillator. Amen. OK, so first of all, let's, uh, let's, let's fix the normalization and see what, what is this condition. This condition means that 1 should be equal to the commutator between k now k is the conjugate. Yes? Yes, exactly. This is what we are going to do in a moment. And just say, OK, before solving this, well, there is another constraint given by the fact that this operator, we can fix the normalization in a way, and it's convenient to fix the normalization this way. Yeah. Such a way that this is equal to 1. OK, so uh, the normalization means that this is, so this is the conjugate of this. So this means that you have to take here the, the conjugate of this coefficient, the conjugate of the other coefficient. So you have that 1 should be equal to p n star vector scalar x. Okay. Oh, there is no p, sorry. Uh, this is called q. OK. q n. Then I get plus y n star scalar p. OK. Commutator that with q n scalar uh, y, y, not y, x, uh, x uh, plus y n scalar p should be equal to 1. Now the x variable commute, p variables commute to one another. So you have only to take into account the commutator between x and p and p and x. We know that the commutator between x and p is proportional to a delta. So it gives rise to the scalar product of the coefficients. So we have that 1 should be equal to q, that is an i. Okay. i because if the commutator between x and p is equal to i. So we have q star scalar product y n plus minus, sorry, minus y n star scalar q n should be equal to 1. Why here there is a minus? Because we have the commutator between p and x, which is minus i. It's not equal to i. Okay. So this is our, this is normalization. Normalization of the operator. We have this condition that we will impose, then, and then we have we have to solve the other, the other two questions. Okay, let's now solve these equations. What can I raise? Okay. We can, for example, what I do, what I do here, uh, so we could plug, we can choose, whatever. so we can plug, for example, uh, you, the, the first equation into the second one. Hmm? So this means, uh, let's assume now that epsilon n different from zero. Okay, if you assume epsilon and epsilon k, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's say epsilon uh, different from zero, so we can divide by epsilon n. So we find qn equal to the expression divided by epsilon n. We plug qn here. What do we find? By right. epsilon n yn is equal to minus i over m epsilon n or i m omega squared c y n okay we find 
like this and it's correct so this can be written as c applied to yn if you multiply by this coefficient is equal to 4 epsilon n squared over omega squared yn yeah okay so we have to solve this equation how do we solve this equation as i told you yesterday this is a sear quantum matrix and because of this symmetry you can uh, diagonalize this matrix in Fourier in Fourier space essentially so this means that the eigenvectors are given by e to the i so you have that c okay let's, let's write this matrix you can write this c ln in this form 1 over n we go in the free space okay 1 over n sum over sum over uh, j it goes from 1 to n of e to the 2 pi i j l minus n over capital n and here we put some coefficient which is called the c tilde j if you want so because of the properties of this matrix we can actually rewrite the matrix in this form and so we just have to determine which are the coefficients cj yeah and cj we know that uh, uh, in particular okay let's let's try c yeah. let's c instead of cj c of 2 pi j over n okay so uh, what we have if we find that the c tilde of 2 pi j over n is equal to 2 yes what's written in? in the exponent okay there is 2 pi i uh, j this is a j multiplied by l minus n and everything divided by capital n what is this this is a discrete uh, free transform because the size of the matrix is n and you see this is periodic and uh, I'm just going in the free space okay? and it depends on the difference of the indices just because this matrix depends only on the difference of, of the indices and there is this condition of periodicity so we can find this C tilde C tilde will be equal to 2 because when you uh, when you replace uh, C tilde by a constant you find that the, the sum of phases and if I am the sum of phases equal to is non zero only if the phase is equal to one if the phase is zero so you find the condition this correspond to the to the first diagonal of the matrix this two then you have to take into account the 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 other diagonals so you you obtain minus two cosine of two pi j over n why is this the case because if you expand to cosine you have e to the i the first plus e to the minus i hmm? the same so when you uh, now the condition becomes l minus n should be equal to plus one or minus one which is exactly what we have here okay this is the minus sign up here yes so this is just another way to write the to write the matrix c cn is, is equal to this you can verify that's the case so we well we were interested in the eigenvalues of c no so that's, that's computer. okay well, maybe it's better if i try to write this question somewhere here normalization Okay, if you want to, if you want to just uh, uh, 
you have this matrix, you notice that it's just tilde. Yes. Ah, I will do that thing. Okay, if you want, you do the anti anti Fourier transform. But I just guess the solution because it's it's kind of uh, intuitive that the, that the, if you have uh, um, so it, it, let's imagine to expand this in, uh, in all the Fourier coefficients. No? See, you have the generic coefficient which have this form e to the i to pi j over n times some uh, integer. No, not l, maybe some integer m. Then you have to sum all these spaces. But again, in order to be different from zero, the space should cancel. So this means that the L minus N plus J should be equal to zero. So this means that this, the, the, this mth Fourier coefficients contribute as the mth column of the, of the matrix. And so you have to just, you, you can just keep the, the first coefficient, the first E to the I phi, I, I do, you see? Because we have just a, a tridiagonal, more or less tridiagonal matrix. But okay, anyway, you, you just uh, uh, you compute the anti Fourier transform. I said, ah, that's not uh, okay. So, we uh, yeah, I have the normalization there. So. So now that they, we wrote this matrix in this form, it's easier to diagonalize it because we <coughs> what we have is that it is to show uh, that the, the eigenvectors are of the form v n equal. Okay, the eigenvector maybe we should put two indices v the k eigenvectors hmm, coordinate j is equal to e is proportional to e to the 2 pi i j k over n maybe with the maybe with the okay with the plus sign okay example so we we just use the sun set so which is equivalent to to consider for the transform so on. and then we, we apply c l n our matrix c to the vector v k yeah and we impose that this is an eigenstate, and what do we find? We find that the, we sum over the indices, we write all the indices, so we have sum over n of c l n times v k of n should be equal to lambda v k of n of uh, l is what we have to solve. Now we use that that representation there, so we have sum this n is from 1 to capital N, n from 1 to capital N of, we have 1 over capital N sum over j, that goes from 1 to n of e to the 2 pi i j over capital N, L minus n, there is c tilde, okay, I wrote, uh, I write that. After that, so uh, we have this contribution e to the 2 pi i n k over capital N, then we have c tilde of 2 pi j over capital N. We have to impose that c is equal to our eigen value of lambda k times. VKL, which is e to the 2 pi i okay, LK over capital M I hope yes. that's it okay. you have to solve this now again we have uh, here there is the sum over N you see okay if you consider the sum over j, there is also this contribution that we don't like. Okay, now, but we we first can consider the sum over n. When you sum over n, you have n only on the faces. So again, we can use the, the sum of faces equal to uh, is non-zero only if the face cancel. So this means that uh, j should be equal to k. Okay, and you get the factor of capital n. So this 
becomes capital N simplifies this. So you find you remain with sum from j that goes from 1 to n of e to the 2 pi i j l over capital N. Then you have C tilde uh, of oh, which uh, there is a delta j k, sorry, j equal k. So here there is a k. It has the 2 pi k over capital N, which should be equal to lambda k e to the 2 pi i l k over capital N. We guess well, you see? Because now we have that indeed these two terms, well, uh, this is consistent with a c tilde 2 pi k over capital N equal lambda k. Yes. Yes, OK. So we, we have this equation, fine. Now you, you, we sum over n. Okay. When you sum over n, you realize that n appears only on the phases, right? So you have the sum of phases, and uh, the only possibility to be non-zero is that the phase becomes equal to zero to pi or that. Okay. And the only possibility is here is equal to zero. So you have uh, l minus n should be equal to minus. Uh, sorry, uh, you you find j equal equal k we are summing over n. OK? So you have this, uh, uh, this condition, uh, j equal k. So when you sum over j, actually, you have just to pick the value k. And you have just uh, one contribution. OK? I'm using this. I'm using, ah, oh, maybe I change color. I'm using this. Sum j goes from 1 to n of e to the 2 pi i j k over capital N is equal to n delta k 0. For k equal 0, uh, n minus 1. So in this way, we, we obtain the, the values of C tilde. No, so, sorry, no, C tilde, we, we had the, uh, the values of lambda, lambda k. So we know that uh, lambda k is just given by this, this expression, the j equal k. So what we found is that, our, no, lambda, what is lambda? Uh, lambda is the eigenvalue of C. And so we, in, in this, in this equation, we have that this part here, yeah, which was the eigenvalue. So for so this part, for epsilon n squared, epsilon n squared over omega squared should be equal to this one, two times one minus cosine of two pi n over capital N. which if you want is equal to 4 times sine squared of pi n over capital N if you like the other, the other one. okay so this gives us the, the eigenvalues we also have the eigenvectors, I guess the eigenvectors, which were this one, vk equal vk. Yes? In the last slide you read, what's Okay, here you have, you see, the, we, we were looking for the eigenvalues. So this is the eigenvalue. Right? And then you have to put the eigenvalue equal to c tilde of k of this expression. Yeah, okay, uh, well, I was explaining, so it's easier. Anyway, so you have 4 epsilon squared over omega squared is equal to twice 1 minus cosine of 2 pi n over capital N. And this is equal to, well, this is just a trigonometric, uh, trigonometric identity, it's equal to 5, 5, 4, 10, 
for uh, sine squared of pi, cap, cap, pi n over capital N. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have this, and we also know the eigenvalues of, of, of C, the, the, again, sorry, the eigenvectors of C, which are this one, which are the phases, no? the spaces. So we also know that yn should be proportional to, where, where I write this now? Uh, okay, I can, uh, I know that is important, maybe. I should erase something. Um, erase this one, this part. I, can I erase this? Yeah? Okay. So we have the, the eigenvectors yn should be proportional to uh, to e to the two pi i n y n j okay over capital n. Mm. Okay. So we have yn, we have the dispersion relation. Let's try this pretty dispersion relation here. So we have that epsilon n, epsilon n, which was is positive by construction, should be equal to, should be equal to omega times the absolute value of sine of pi n over capital N. Maybe now we understand why I chose the normalization 1 over 8 m omega squared, because uh, just to simplify this form. <laughs> Only for that reason. <laughs> so this is our uh, uh, epsilon, and we know y n. But now, we, uh, from this equation, we can get q n, because we need both. Or for the other, from the other equation. No, no, for, from this equation it's easier. And so we have uh, the Q, Qn. Okay, let's put here some constant. Uh, this will be some constant, which could depend on n. Hmm? That's true, it could depend on n. So uh, we apply this expression there, and we find that uh, Qn is equal to is equal to i m epsilon n times this. So you have k this constant, k n, e to the 2 pi i n j over capital N. OK? OK, we have this arbitrary constant, which is just because we have to impose the normalization. Uh, we, we didn't do it yet. So the normalization was the condition there. So we have that the... Uh, <laughs> I hope it's correct. Uh, yes, we have that... Uh, yeah, there is written that the... This is uh, the... The imaginary part... Okay, now let's... let's Right, what is written there? Okay, one is equal to i, which multiplies q n star, so you have minus i m epsilon n k this constant of star e to the two pi i and j over capital N. Uh, you have this. This is J, the component J of this. So you have to sum this over J. Times y y n, which was this one. So you have k n squared e to the two pi i n j over n. Right, yeah, indeed. So there is a minus here, thanks. Yeah, otherwise, it doesn't simplify. 
Okay, this. And then you have the other term, which is minus uh, y n star. So we have uh, this uh, a n star e to the minus 2 pi i n j over capital N times uh, q n, which is this one. So there is a, an i here. We have this again. Uh, this simplifies into the minus 2 pi i n j over capital N, and then you have m uh, epsilon n, and uh, yeah, everything, yeah, I guess, Oops, hopefully. So this is equal to uh, the sum over j gives n, is right? Yes, so the sum over j gives n, hmm, because there is nothing dependent on j in this expression. So you find i times minus i is equal to 1, the same from for this, these terms cancel. And so you find, you find twice m <coughs> epsilon k, km squared. Maybe check, okay, factors can be, well, maybe there is some type, but I guess it's correct. So this is our normalization. And this fixes this KM up to the face, but the face is completely irrelevant, this problem, okay? So we can choose this KM uh, real, no problem. Okay. So, the, so we have everything. I guess now we have really everything. Hmm? So we can rewrite this operator A K. But there is a subtlety. These are our energies, our okay, the eigenvalues of C, which are actually the, the excitation energies, as we see, because they, commute, they are related to the commutator between H and A. But now there is a zero eigenvalue here, right? Because for N equals zero, this is equal to zero. While this normalization condition here seems to to state that the one should be equal to zero. So this means that we cannot impose this condition for the zero mode here, for n equal to zero. So we can impose the, I, well, this was our convention to choose this normalization for, uh, it works for any, for any n, but zero. So for zero, we have to treat it uh, separately. Okay. So, um, what can I, what can I erase here? Uh, this I can now, this I can, this I can, this I can, can. Okay. Indeed, okay, we assume uh, from the beginning, I'm sorry, was different from zero. Why did we do that? Why? So my dash is this. Uh, well, well, we don't need this anymore. Okay. Uh, Jesus. So let us rewrite this a dot k. So the a dot k is finally given by I use now expression so that I avoid typos. Either case would be equal to uh, yes, sum over j from 1 to capital N of e to the 2 pi i n of k, k j over capital N uh, divided by square root of 2 m omega sine of pi k over uh, capital N times capital N. And here you have the, the momentum Pj plus e to the, the same, 2 pi, yes, 2 pi i kj over, over capital N. 
p x x j divided by no divided by nothing uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, times the square okay times the square root of there is an i square root of m omega sine of pi n over capital N divided by square root of 2 capital N x j x uh, yes j uh, there is a k here instead of n okay I think this is this is our final result for the a dot k and we know we impose that a k a dot k is equal to 1, as in the single harmonic oscillator. And we have k different from 0. Sorry, instead of epsilon is from 0, k different from 0. Okay? When we have k equal to 0, so this is k different from 0, let's now think a bit about the case k equal to 0. K equal to zero, everything was fine, but the normalization. Okay, and and if indeed what what you find is that the k equal zero, the the solution was something just proportional to the total momentum, total momentum of the uh, of the particles. And this is clear because it's a it's a periodic system, and the potential depends on the difference of the position. So this means that the the, the Hamiltonian is invariant under under uh, uh, under rotation. The rotation, okay, well, uh, translation, the global translation. And so, indeed, k equals zero correspond to, what is it? k equal to zero, okay? We can choose instead of, it's just something proportional to the total momentum, which is equal sum over j from one to n of the particle, bj. So what I mean is that if you consider the commutator, okay, here we, we derive this asking for h a dot k should be equal to epsilon k, which is equal to omega sine of pi k over capital N times a dot k. Now we have that the momentum satisfy h capital P equal to zero. This is the difference. Hmm? Is conserved for the moment. Nothing more than that. Okay, so we have all these operators. Uh, how many of them? How many operators we have? We have we have n minus one a dag, right? Then we have n capital N minus one a. And so the total is 2 capital N minus 2. And we have a momentum, total momentum, P. An operator is missing here. Because we need two capital N operators, like the original variables were uh, capital N X's and capital N P's. So, uh, which is this variable missing, this operator missing? is the conjugate variable of the total momentum, which is the, the, the center of mass uh, position of the particle. So the operator that we are missing is, which we can call, no, what is it? We can call x, no, it's not here. We can call x, which is sum over j from one to capital N of the position divided by Indeed, if you, you can check that the commutator between this and this is i, so this is, they are conjugate variables, and you can also check that this commutes with all the a, a is here, as well as b. Yeah. So now we complete, well, I think we have all the operators, uh, so we pass from the, the uh, x and p to the new operator, this ladder operator, a dag and a, 
we have this uh, Saturday because we, we lack an operator, uh, which is the total momentum because of the symmetries of the Hamiltonian, total momentum and the conjugate position, okay, central mass position. So what do we do now? Well, we, we rewrite the Hamiltonian in terms of this, of this new operator. So we have to invert this relation. Okay. You, you can invert the relation, but I just write the result. It's not uh, very useful to do now, no, really, the calculation. It's easy. And what you find is the following. You find that the momentum j, the momentum of the particle j, or the ion j, is equal to sum from n that goes from 1 to capital N minus 1 of e to the minus 2 pi i. OK, let's call this k. I like more. 2 pi k, k. L over capital N square root of m omega sine of pi k over capital N divided by 2 capital N. And here you have a dag k plus a k. Oh, no, no, a k. A n minus k plus everything. So all this plus p total moment divided by n. And for the x j, you find sum k from 1 to capital N minus 1, e to the minus 2 pi i k l over capital N. Then you have 1 over square root of 2m capital N omega sine of pi k over capital N times i a k dag minus a, you know, this is wrong, a n n minus k minus a dag k plus x. So, okay, these are the, uh, the inverse of, the, of those relations. And again, I rewrote them again because it uh, should be clear. So the, the algebra of the operator, a k a dag q is equal delta k q. a k a q is equal to 0. Yes. Uh, because again, uh, I, I, we have to exclude the case k equals 0, which is like k equal n, capital N because it, well, it's always in the face, it's 2 pi k. So uh, it's a matter of convention. I could have written this as, no, in this way, I should write it. Uh, I have to remove the case k equals 0, so you have n minus 1. You know? It's originally we have this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 1, indeed. So if we start from, uh, yeah, we have to remove either 0 or a capital N. So, you know, your choice is completely equivalent. So we have, uh, yeah? Good question. Because, I, <laughs> because there is no L in any other place. I don't know why I wrote L. Ah, because here is written L. So here, okay, so let's do it this way. L, L. So there shouldn't be J, indeed. There is no J there. Okay, so we have this relation, but then we have also that uh, uh, x p is equal to i. Then we have uh, oh, all the other, which is x a dag k is equal to p a dag k, which is equal to zero. So in other words, every uh, commutator is equal to zero, but the commutator between capital X and capital P, and the commutator between A, K, and A, dark K. These are our operators. And uh, let's rewrite the Hamiltonian. I'll do for you. 
so you can check and you should because I, I hope it's correct but who knows okay. so the Hamiltonian is written in this form total momentum squared divided 2 m capital n this shouldn't be surprising because it's the kinetic energy of the central mass of the, of the particle so this should be something that you you should have you should expect then there is plus sum over k goes from 1 to capital n minus 1 of omega psi pi k over capital n a dag k a k plus and there is a constant a useless uh, important constant cotangent, cotangent of pi over 2n 2n what is this oh this is part of the other one so this is something you should expect this is the same as in the harmonic oscillator now but now we have more mods than the other case so we have uh, a slightly more complicated system, and then there is a constant like uh, one half omega in the, in the single harmonic oscillator. Here we have one half omega cotangent of pi over two capital N. Okay, you have to live with that. Yeah. No, this is uh, just the, the, the exact, exact. Uh, these are the original variables. Excel was the displacement of the ions from the from the lattice side. Hmm? And P are the conjugate moment, so the velocity of the particles, the, the moment of the of the ions. In the moment, you have, uh, let's say, uh, the position of the reader for uh, one phonon for the collective motion. What's the position of one phonon? Yeah, okay. Because it's a collective, indeed. Okay, you already called the, you, you introduced now phonon. I didn't say I have a phonon. Okay, look. Anyway, okay, let, let me tell everybody this. So, <coughs> no, first of all, we, we, should, uh, we should understand this Hamiltonian. So, we found this Hamiltonian, and uh, it has the same form as in the single harmonic oscillator, but now we have the sum of all the modes, which are independent because they commute between one another. So, really, like we, we, we were able to, uh, to reduce this Hamiltonian to independent oscillators. And it was coupled originally. So this is what we did. And uh, uh, so, what is the ground state of this Hamiltonian now? We know, no? The ground state is the state such that O uh, is uh, annihilated by all this A. Mm? So it's the vacuum for all these A's. And it has also another condition it should have zero momentum zero total momentum because otherwise you have a positive contribution from here. So the ground state of the model, which uh, I write the ground state is such that ah, it can be written as the vacuum of all DA, and then we have, oh, let's write zero. Well, no, uh, I put zero. Okay, anyway. vacuum, comma, zero, where well, this is momentum zero, the eigenvalue of the, of the total momentum. This is our ground state. Okay, I give you four minutes, okay, because some of you ask me. Really strict four minutes, then I start again, so don't, don't go. Yes, yes, no, this is just a constant. This is a constant, so it's outside the sum. Oh, okay, and the constant, what is it? Omega cotangent? Cotangent, yes, of pi over 2 capital N. And what is the symbol that is besides the T? Uh, two. Ah, no. Oh, it's a G, a cot, uh, okay. 
this is good engine. Oh. It was good engine, uh, yes. Oh. Fly over to Capitale. Eh? Sorry? How did you get it? Ah, this is, you can, uh, well, what you obtain is the sum of this, and you can solve this. Uh, it's just a series. Uh, it's a sum, you can resum it, and uh, you obtain it. Uh, if you want, you can write it as a sum. Uh, yeah. Sorry, can you repeat? There is a reference for this course? Reference. Reference. Uh, uh, for you. <laughs> I, I don't know actually. Now, now I don't know where you can find this exactly. I know where you. Can lecture there are lecture notes. Okay, maybe I will give you. But the, the, without doubt, you can find references for the singular harmonic oscillator. I should check which book uh, treat the couple harmonic oscillator in this way, because generally, okay, the, this problem are uh, are considered context matter. And they are solved in a, maybe in a slightly different way. So you just write the, uh, the, the, the wave function and you try to solve the equation, like the harmonic oscillator. So, so, so I, uh, I should think about the book uh, for the standards. I, I don't know now. I didn't understand. I had this problem two harmonic oscillators and I found that it is unsolvable. Unsolvable. I, I got to know from my advisor that yeah, all these ends are published. So you, you discovered today that they can be solved. <laughs> okay, so we will start again. I think it's time. Uh, more than time. Okay. So shall we start? Uh, Okay, is uh, when you say vacuum, is the vacuum of uh, the particles that we define. So we have another degree of freedom. So it's not, uh, from my point of view, it's not so surprising. So you mean what's the physical meaning? So uh, uh, you know, for particles uh, having moment of zero, why makes the object in its So what? For the vacuum, we can have p equals to zero because vacuum. But this means simply that it's localized. The the central mass is completely localized, and you have a p equals here. I I, I don't see. There shouldn't be problems. I hope. Uh, and you, you can. What well, I mean is that these are completely uh, independent terms. They commute, so you can treat this part just like a, a standard uh, uh, a particle without a potential. So a free particle. It's just the Hamiltonian of a free particle, and so they free, just free because it's a p squared over two m. And so free free particles in the ground state is that uh, the momentum is zero, but it's completely localized. It's, it's not a uh, yes. It, is in a normalizable uh, solution, but uh, okay. Uh, so, so, so let, let's start again. Uh, this is our ground state, which is written as the vacuum of this ladder operator AK, and it has zero total momentum. Okay. Now. Again, how do we uh, construct the set of states? We act, we apply the, this operator, the creation operator. Now we, we, we understand why and I call it them creation operators. And so we have a generic set of state can be written as a, in this form, N1, oh, N, I use N1, N1, N, N, J. 
that's good now. Okay, let's consider uh, just excited state with a zero total momentum for the sake of simplicity. So this will be given by, well, trust me about the normalization, because it's, uh, it's something that actually you could guess easily from the result from the harmonic oscillator, the single harmonic oscillator. So you have this, uh, A dag uh, one, no, what is, yes, one to be an uh, one, A dag, okay, this is one is K one, one, K1, yes, then what? Okay, no, okay, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's write in this other form n capital n minus 1. So we have a1 and 1, a capital n minus 1, the n capital n minus 1, okay. yes, and minus 1 factorial vacuum. Zero. This is a sector of our space. It's a sector just because we, we chose P, capital P, uh, the total moment to be zero. Otherwise, we have other, uh, other I guess, states of the problem, but just by changing the total moment, increasing the total moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just focus on this zero momentum sector. With this, okay. How is this called? This uh, okay now. Um, you see, uh, so far uh, this uh, this formalism was just useful to solve the problem. Okay? So we define this kind of creation operator, and uh, uh, and we were able to diagonalize the Hamiltonian, as we know that oh, we also know the energy clearly, right? because the energy of this, the energy of the state, I would call it n one, n capital n minus one, is just given by the sum over sum now let's write that well so we have the sum of n from j that goes to one from n minus one n j epsilon the energy of okay which is uh, the energy associated with the uh, with this which is all where is the energy uh, is omega sine of J pi over capital N, and I guess that's it. Ah, is this the energy? You can see, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Maybe let's write k, k because it has to be cons consistent with the previous expression. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, This is just the, another quantum number. It's the quantum number uh, corresponding to the total moment. And we are in the sector with zero total moment. You have also, again, uh, you, have, you have like a state with different p. Yeah. So now we have created uh, one vacuum and one quantum and, and minus one. So the state one more particle there, which is particle. This is not a particle, this is zero. This is the momentum. It corresponds to the total moment. It's a different notation. I put, put let's write in this way just to. I see. Why is it zero? It's taking only the vacuum, not after we have created particles. Yeah, but okay, if you want to characterize the eigenstates, you have to consider all the quantum numbers. So we have these quantum numbers, ah. which are the number of particles with a given, with a given what, well, momentum, okay? And then you have the total momentum, which is equal to zero in this case. Yeah. The chain, okay, it was kind of a ring, so that uh, all the ions are yes, are just uh, rotating. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can always find the reference system where momentum is zero. Okay. So, yeah. As a sort of problem, we have like that all the oscillators were coupled. And then we are. Um, we well, decouple the oscillator. <laughs> yeah. The expression is that okay. Originally, when you consider the, the harmonic oscillator, you you are describing the oscillation between two uh, two ions, yeah. just two ions. But then you realize that this is this uh, this is not a uh, a normal mode. This is not a um, this doesn't have a fixed energy. 
this kind of uh, oscillation in the system. Instead, there are other oscillations that have a fixed excitation energy and are collective excitation, where all these ions are moving either together or in the opposite phases, whatever. So, and this describes this kind of excitation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, well, now that there is a nice interpretation of this, uh, of this formula. And the idea is to, indeed, uh, uh, reinterpret these operators here, this ladder operator, as operators that create particles, that create a particle. Yeah. So the idea is to say, okay, when I apply this A DAG, hmm, so this is, indeed, this I call the vacuum, so absence of particles. And then I'm saying, now, when I apply this A DAG, okay, I'm creating this particle with a given momentum, k. Okay. Just an interpretation. And using this interpretation, you realize that here, the, the state of the system do not have a fixed number of particles. Because here, you can construct, okay, we have the vacuum, zero particles. Then if you just apply one, one A DAG, you find one particle. So our system, generally in, uh, in quantum mechanics, you say, OK, I have a fixed number of particles, you write the Hamilton, and then uh, that's it. So this is your, uh, your states are, have a given fixed number of particles. Now if you use this interpretation here, we have to change, in, uh, in a sense, our space. Because now we have to take into account that uh, you can have an arbitrary number of particles. And this space is called the Fox space, okay? when you have this situation. So in other words, we, we reinterpret this operator as operator that create this kind of particle. So in particular, for example, the state 1 and all 0 here uh, it correspond to having just one of this particle with a given moment to k1, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but which kind of particles are these? So, because we know two to different species of particles. Huh? We know that there can be bosons, there can be fermions in general. So what are we constructing here? You can easily verify that they, we are constructing bosons. Why? Because of this algebra. So we have that this commutator commute with one another. So if you interchange two particles here, you find the same wave function with the same phase one equal to one. So these particles are bosons. And uh, this is why we uh, sometimes you, you, could, you could hear that uh, the way to diagonalize this, uh, the harmonic oscillator is to map it to a, a free uh, chain of bosons. Because these are just bosons, free bosons. And uh, um, we have a name for these particular bosons in, the, in this harmonic uh, chain. They are called phonons. Okay. And maybe you already know about phonons from other courses. Maybe you derive it in a different way. And they are exactly this mode of oscillations. <laughs> so uh, it, uh, the concept of particle here is different from what you imagine usually. So it's not something that has a given position that you imagine that is moving a particle. Here it can be also a collective motion, is an effective description. So a single boson is something which includes all the degrees of freedom of our, of our system. Okay. But still we can call it boson and we can study its properties and whatever. Hmm? Are we happy? Okay, so that's nice, but uh, yeah, the, we like to, to diagonalize Hamilton, but we would like also to, to investigate at, at least some properties of the state. Well, uh, we, we did all this, uh, all this work, at least that we, we could compute something of uh, the, the ground state. No? And yeah. Yes, indeed. Indeed, all the operator A DAG commute with one another because of this. So it's completely symmetric. Yeah. And what is nice of this interpretation, because uh, you, of this uh, formalism, is that when you include, you, you consider bosons in uh, identical particles in quantum mechanics, you have to symmetrize the wave function. So it's something kind of complicated, complicated matter. Here instead, you obtain vectors which are already symmetrized. You don't have to do anything. You already obtain the, the final result. The symmetry is already inside the properties, inside the operator. OK. Uh, I was saying, okay, the, the, now that we, we obtain the spectrum, we obtain the ground state, it could be nice to see some properties of this harmonic chain, just to uh, 
the some physics uh, at some point. But, and um, yeah. Well, you see from here, in this particular case, there are degeneracies. Because if you plot the sign of this as a function of k, this is, uh, this is uh, n uh, k, k pi over capital N, and this is the energy. Energy, what you find is this one. So that is degeneracy here. Yes. Yes. In general, you don't. Uh, but, no, uh, as a matter of fact, you, every time that you consider chains, you have this kind of degeneracy. You have similar degeneracy. It's, it's always present. If uh, you can stop. Yeah. No, no, okay, we, we restricted ourselves to this sector. But you should imagine that you can actually consider, ev you can put every momentum piece. So you could ask, okay, I'm interested in the ground state with a given uh, momentum, different from zero. Not really a ground state, but you choose another sector, and then you just change P, and everything is the same. So P is just a, a phase. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 when you write in, uh, in real space the eigenfunction, the fact that you choose a different P means that you have a phase in front of everything which is proportional to the capital X, e to the I. You choose some P, some particular P, and you will have a contribution like this. Minus I. Yes. Times something. So the only difference between this and this with a P is that you have, in the, in the real, in the coordinate space, you have this kind of phase multiplied. It's completely decoupled, yeah. Well, you, you should expect this because uh, the, the, the interaction depended only on the difference of the position. So, you should have a step. It's not, a, it's not this momentum, it's a different kind of momentum. It's not the momentum of the, of the ions here. It's the momentum of, of this effective particle, which has a completely different meaning. OK? It, it must be uh, clear about this. So we, we started with this variable of the phonons, which are other particles which correspond to this oscillation. So it's a different, it has a different meaning. It's not a, mo a motion of the, of the ions. It's something more complicated. OK? Okay, uh, but now it's time uh, to do this, this kind of a simple calculation. And in particular, the, uh, we could be curious, for example, to see in the ground state of this model, where are the, uh, the ions, for example. So what is the average displacement of the, of the ions with respect to the, to the, to the lattice? Okay. And in particular, clearly, if we compute the, the average displacement, we find zero because of symmetries of the problem. So if you want to see the, yeah, the absolute value of displacement, we, we compute the squared of the difference of the x. Okay? We want to have a, a, some knowledge about how far this, uh, the, the ions are from this artificial lattice sites. So in particular, we, we compute, OK. This can be useful. Uh, this uh, we know by heart. Until now, we didn't use the boundary condition. I, no, no, we, we did. Really? We did when we computed this, and when we computed the so the eigenfunctions and the eigenvalues of C, because we uh, when uh, if you consider the metric C as those particular eigenfunctions e to the, the phases, only if you have periodic boundary conditions. As I was telling to your colleague, if you, if you consider open boundary condition, for example, just J, you have sign in the, instead of phases. Yeah. And you have, a, as a matter of fact, you have a very similar res result. 
that you still can write in this way. The only thing is that, can, that change is the argument, okay, when you change the boundary conditions. Uh, uh, the reason why is this the case? Because if you imagine to take the thermodynamic limit here, okay, we will do, but uh, now I just uh, very quickly I tell you this. Then you send n to infinity, so you have infinite oscillator, and then this gives you the dispersion relation of this of this particle. But now, if you are taking the thermodynamic limit, the boundary condition don't play any role in the bulk. So this is why you should expect that the functional form here should remain the same. At, at the most, you should imagine that some change in the quantization of the moment or in that. Okay. Yeah. What's the fixed momentum, momentum of the system? Uh, the particle from well, the state over n is fixed, and that's why we don't consider this less limit? Okay, we last index. Uh, okay, the, the last index because uh, we we have we have defined this operator only for index k different from zero or capital N. So it, it's, they are completely undefined. Uh, it's not something I'm removing. They are not defined, and the uh, the remaining operator there was an operator, uh, two operators remaining corresponding to this zero, which are this one. So I you just change the. Notation. These are I call A, and this becomes X and P. And the reason is that A, you see, they are not termission. You have A and A dot. Instead, P is termission. So this is why I changed the completely. And also because okay, we know the total moment. We use P to indicate the total moment, which is at X indicate the position. Okay. Okay. So the the idea is to compute this displacement, which is, let's use the notation here. So we, uh, from now on, I assume the total moment equal to zero, okay? So I, I'm not writing zero. I'm always assuming total moment equal to zero. So the, que the first question is to compute this displacement, x, the expectation value of this. Because x was the displacement, huh? so x i squared. So first of all, well, our system is invariant under uh, uh, under um, cyclic permutation of the of the of the ions. So this means that this is independent of i. So this is we already know that it should be equal to x one, for example, m fix. The, the particular side. Then, how do we compute this? This is now when this kind of formalism becomes very, very useful. Because now we, uh, we can express x in terms, of the, what is it, in terms of the A operators. And we know what happens when you apply these A operators to the vacuum. So we, it's just, we, we just have to write this expression and then uh, use this computational relation. And we're able to obtain the result. So let's do it. So we have here vacuum. Now we have to write this x1 squared. Let's write all this. OK. So we have, uh, OK, why should this Um, is I uh, A and minus A minus A dot K, then you have plus no plus X, and we have the same here. Okay, this is what we want to compute. 
Now, okay, we have uh, several terms here. Let's immediately see which terms go to zero. Why they go to zero? The last term. Zero one. Okay. Okay. So here we have. Okay, anyway, uh, first of all, we, we have some terms like this, okay, multiply by itself, and this we have to compute, and we'll do. Then we have a term, which is this, multiplied by x, yeah, okay? But now what happens is that this commutes with x, because the two operators commute with x, so this means that uh, uh, you can move this operator to the right if you want, of x or not. Now, when you move this operator A to the right, then it annihilates the vacuum. So it is equal to zero. On the other end, this operator is in A dark and annihilates this, this one. So you have that there is zero contribution from this times x. Okay? Then we have, I should see, now it should simplify, I think, somehow. <laughs> okay, the contribution from x, well, s, x squared here. Okay? So let's compute it, because I did it, and I didn't have that. So let's compute this first term. So uh, this first times the second. And we already know that we can neglect this, because this annihilates the vacuum. And uh, in the same way, we can uh, remove this operator from here, because it annihilates the vacuum on the other side. So we have that is equal to, this is equal to, OK. The, the other is the vacuum, then we have some k from 1 to n minus 1, e to the minus. Let's consider first this term times this, so h by k over capital N, 1 over square root of 2m, and omega sine k by over capital N uh, times i a n minus k. Mm -hmm. Then we have here sum over, I call this. Uh, u, 1, n minus 1, of e to minus 2 pi i q over capital N, 1 over square root of 2 m and omega sine of q pi over capital N mm -hmm. times i minus i a dot q, apply to the vacuum. And then we have also the other term. Anyway. Okay, so now we. It's true that the, this does, doesn't annihilate the vacuum here, but if we are able to move this operator here, then we analyze, we annihilate the, the vacuum. So it becomes zero. So the only possibility for this term to be non-zero if, is if this n minus k is equal to q. Because only when k equal to q, the commutator is different from zero. OK? So this means that this is equal to phi. Now we have the condition q equal n minus k here. So we have a sum where k from 1 to capital N minus 1, and then we have e to the minus 2 pi i k over capital N, 1 over square root 2 m and omega sine of k pi over capital N. Then we have this term with the q equal capital N minus q, which simplifies this term. And we have this term when, what is this, pi? when q is equal capital N minus q, which is equal to itself, because the sign is, in, is invariant under reflection about pi over 2. So this is the same term, 
means that we can remove the square root here. And then we uh, we remain with this a n minus k, a dac n minus k vacuum. Yes? Oh, no, I just want Yes. Okay, you we know that the the vacuum is defined as a state such that when you apply you remove well, boson. There are no bosons at zero. Uh, it's, it's equal to zero. Okay, so if uh, uh, now you you consider all the terms here, you immediately see that this term here gives zero contribution. Why? Because you can apply it to the left, hmm? and so this annihilates that, that, that part. Analogously, if you consider the other term, now you have in this other term, you have this contribution A that annihilates this vacuum. So you can remove those immediately. Then, okay, you, you, you remain with these terms. And now you realize, oh, I should be careful because now I could move this to the, to the right and then I lay the vacuum. And the only possibility not to do that is that n minus k is equal to q. So this means that I can just consider the term in the last expression. And this is what I obtain. Now, if I move this operator to the right, what do I find? One, uh, one. Sorry, I find i. No, one, one. Sorry, uh, find one because the commutator is equal to one, and then the, the remaining term is just the a applied to the to the vacuum. What I mean is that this is okay. I cannot write here. Maybe yes, I, I can write here. So this is equal to the commutator between a and minus k, a dag and minus k plus a dag and minus k a and minus k, just by definition of the commutator. This term is equal to 1, and this term is zero contribution because it's applied to the vacuum. OK? So in the end, you find that this is equal to 1, and we have an expression. Last, last. What about x squared? OK? We will come back uh, this afternoon. OK? We will continue. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's enough. Yeah, yeah, we will talk about this. <laughs> <laughs>